Welcome to a special edition of Crypto Corner at InvestorIdeas.com, talking to experts and leaders in crypto and blockchain from the Blockchain Futurist Conference held in Toronto, Canada, August 15th and 16th at the Rebel Centre. Over 2,000 enthusiasts gathered to attend standing room panels, presentations and launches of new technology. This podcast was sponsored by cryptocurrency payment technology Flip, a creation of FitPay Inc., a leading provider of cutting-edge payment technology and a subsidiary of NextID, trading on the NASDAQ NXTD. You can learn more about how to order your Flip today at www.fliptopay.com. This podcast was also sponsored by Gopher Protocol Inc., a company trading on the OTCQB GOPH. Gopher develops Internet of Things technology, artificial intelligence technology, enabled for mobile technology, and blockchain and cryptocurrency technology. For more information on Gopher and its technology portfolio, you can visit www.gopherprotocol.com. The Crypto Corner is also sponsored by Genesis Blockchain Technologies. They are the first mobile decentralized currency exchange for global traders. You can download the app at Google Play Store and on the Apple App Store. All you need to do is look for Genesis Exchange and Wallet. This is InvestorIdeas.com and I'm here at the Blockchain Futurist Conference in Toronto, Canada and I'm here with Andrew Kegel, CEO of Hut8, traded on the TSX Venture as HUT.B and on the OTC as HUTMF. Andrew was both a panelist and a speaker at the event and brought new and first-hand perspective to the recent declines in the price of cryptocurrencies. So first of all, Andrew, I saw both your panel and your presentation yesterday. It's day two. What are your impressions of the conference so far? Uh, I think it's been a good conference. Um, You know, they've attracted a lot of good speakers and uh, there's been some good information here. Anything excite you? Anything surprise you, shock you? Um... Nothing that I've seen so far, but to be honest, we, we did put out our, our Q2 this morning, so I haven't attended as much of the conference as maybe other people have. Well, let's go right into that. Let's talk about your Q2, your earnings today, and what yep. can you give us in, like a snapshot highlight of what that looked like? Yeah, sure. So we reported about $7.8 million of revenue for the quarter, uh, works out to about $18 million for the six months end of June 30th. Uh, we had positive operating margins. Uh, our operating margins from mining operations were 64% for Q2 and 70, 73% uh, for the six months ended uh, June 30th. So despite the decline in the price of Bitcoin and the increasing difficulty, we have still managed to remain profitable and, and continue uh, running our business extremely well. That's that's rare in this business at this stage. Well, that's, you know, back to one of the things, we see a lot of companies, especially at events like this, that have... Um, I guess they have products and services that have yet to come to fruition. So I think we're one of the the only companies here that actually have revenue uh, and earnings. So I think that makes us unique. Um, the one thing I would say that's that's interesting about our quarter is we in mid July announced a 350 percent increase in our capacity by uh, getting our medicine hat facility up and running. It's 48 additional megawatts, and that was not reflective in our Q2. So despite that, uh, I believe between the two. Uh, the six months, we still had uh, close to $17 million of EBITDA. One of the things you talked about, too, in your presentation was your competitive advantage in terms of your energy prices. Can you go into that a little bit? Sure. So back when I was an investment banker and, and, and HUD-8 was really a, a, a gleam of an idea amongst myself and some other people, we looked at some of the, the other mining companies out there. And, and one of the things that we saw that was missing was really securing and having a transparent form of, of cheap energy. So in in HUD-8, the the big thing that we did, which I've not seen any other mining companies do, is we secured a a 42 megawatt 10-year contract with the city of Medicine Hat. Uh, The rates there, I'm not allowed to disclose, but they are uh, highly competitive. Um, And in U.S. dollars, it would be actually far below four cents U.S. So that's very competitive to what other people are mining at, and we've locked that in for 10 years. So I think that's a huge advantage. One of the things I liked you said um, in your panel discussion yesterday, you were very... I think pro, uh, you are a very big advocate for the people in the space, the average person that's trading cryptocurrencies. And you said that um, the distribution of wealth in the space is amongst people that don't really like regulation. Can you expand on that a little bit more? 
Sure. So when I first started looking at the space, I mean, one of the things that was appealing, I think, to people that own cryptocurrency was that they did not have to fill out accredited investor forms. They did not have to go through through regulations. And with Bitcoin being a, a global currency and, and the first real major global currency, um, I, I think that is one of the things that became very appealing to people. One of the things that I see from the, the different panelists and people I'm hearing is, yes, regulation is coming. But ultimately, if you're just putting in all the same regulations that the normal capital markets have, you know, really, are you just looking at two different ways of financing that look exactly the same? I believe that the, the people who are more anti-establishment and at the root and at the heart of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency will end up finding other alternatives that steer them away from the, the regulatory, the strict regulatory environment uh, that is being imposed right now in the, in the current crypto market. Well, especially when you look at a lot of the investors or millennials, and uh, I know Robinhood, the the one site said that I think they have five million investors, and they're looking at crypto, they're looking at cannabis. They are a representation of that generation that's looking anti institution. I mean, they they get Netflix instead of cable. <laughs> they, right. they like Uber. They're well, in a completely different direction. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we look at the genesis of Bitcoin, it was um, October two thousand and nine when the white paper was released and started trading in. in January uh, uh, right to 2009 and so at that time that was right after the Great Recession when I think people realized they can't trust their central banks they can't trust their governments uh, to moderate uh, inflation properly or to protect them you know Lehman Brothers you know one week announces four billion dollars of profit and 30 days later they're bankrupt it doesn't make sense to common people and so I think that is the real genesis of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and in bringing in all this regulation we're really just taking the establishment and trying to throw it on top of the crypto market, my thought is, yes, there needs to be some form of regulation there, but will that ultimately kill the, the real sentiment of what has made the crypto market what it is today? Um, also, for anybody that's never really heard about your company, and this is a standalone interview, can you talk about your uh, relationship with Bitfury? Sure. So when we had the idea, we wanted to create a, a public entity that would give people within the establishment an ability to have uh, exposure to Bitcoin specifically. And so we reached out to Bitfury. They're one of the largest blockchain companies in the world, the, the second largest ASIC chip manufacturer for Bitcoin mining in the world. And we proposed the idea to them for them to partner with us. The reason why that's important is, we again, we saw a lot of these other uh, crypto mining companies that were ordering equipment but really didn't know what to do with it. They didn't have power contracts. They thought they could just build data centers quite quickly and easily. Our view was very different. We said, let's go to the leaders in the space, people that have been doing this successfully for eight years, that have perfected the technology so that we don't have to go through the trial and error. And so that partnership is very important. Uh, they own 45% of HUD-8, and they, with that alignment, they provide us up-to-date chips, they provide us the, the, the installation, the servicing, Everything goes along with that, and our investors don't need to take that risk because that technology has already been done by Bitfury. And do you have any personal thoughts on the future direction of cryptocurrency prices and Bitcoin with the sort of the recent volatility and downturn? I, I do. Um, so one of the things that I'm seeing uh, at, at HUD-8 is we get weekly calls from other miners that are losing money and are looking to really fire sale their equipment and their facilities. The reality is, is that today's price it's really decoupled from the network hash rate. There used to be a relationship there, whereas the network hash rate went up, so would the price of Bitcoin to keep the economics of mining there. And that's decoupled this year. And what's happening is that a lot of people out there didn't raise enough capital, they didn't have the expertise or a lot of the advantages that had eight uh, put in place, and they're suffering. My perspective is as long as that equipment is out there circulating at fire sale prices, the hash rate will, may continue to go up, uh, and, and, and essentially put pressure on the price of Bitcoin from going up. There might be outside catalysts such as you know an ETF and more institutional money coming in, but as long as this hash rate keeps going up and these miners are losing money and selling their coin, there might be increased pressure to keep the Bitcoin price in and around this price. What I view as the real catalyst here to getting the price of Bitcoin up is when the new CapEx spend comes in. So a lot of the equipment that's floating around is sort of last generation or two generations old. The useful life of that equipment, uh, I, I don't believe, will really be go beyond middle of next year. At that point, we're going to have to spend millions and millions of dollars to stay current, 
And I think that will discourage a lot of people from getting into the mining market, and that will lead either to an increase in the price of Bitcoin or a decrease in the, in the network hash rate. You're a successful person. You've been in investment banking. You're now running your own public company. Do you have any rituals or, or routines that you rely on when things are bad or that just make you successful? Yeah, so I, I find routine is very helpful. So I try and wake up every day. Um, I try to not look at my phone for the first half hour. Um, and I try and do some meditation or some relaxation just to get myself up ready for the day. And I look at my schedule. Uh, I spend about half an hour reading the news. Um, I do things like I like taking a cold shower every morning, um, just again, just to get me invigorated and ready for the day. But I find that those rituals uh, help me get prepared for the day. And if that means waking up an hour earlier, it just makes me feel much better prepared for what I'm doing during the day. To hear and read previous editions of Crypto Corner, visit www.investorideas.com forward slash crypto dash corner. And a reminder, you can also hear our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, and Google Play Music. If you're an investor that likes to follow blockchain and crypto stocks, Investor Ideas has created a stock directory just for you. You can learn more at www.investorideas.com forward slash membership. Investor Ideas also reminds all of our listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investment involves risk and possible loss of investment.